All right, we're here at ABA in 30. Alexa, set a timer for 30 minutes. All right, guys, so this is our new series we've been doing. Liat did one on reinforcement. This one um, I have planned is gonna be on, we're gonna start off with just drawing out the parts of the graph, okay? So you can understand how to read a graph. Before we get into reading graphs, we need to know the parts that are required on a graph and how to read them and how to draw our own. So if you have paper, I suggest you get it out and draw along with me. Um, I'm definitely not um, the best artist, but don't worry guys. We'll, go, we'll do this together. All right, share to the... Also, how's everyone doing? Give me some excitement. Woo! 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 I was just watching this collective video, actually. Like, well, the one about the graphs, too. Oh, were you? Mm -hmm. right, that's class 15, guys, if anyone is interested. All right. <laughs> Don't hate my <laughs> cover. <laughs> Guys, we're gonna be talking about parts of a graph. I drew some like different parts of the graph, right? But things that you need to know, remember this is gonna be recorded and on YouTube so you can watch it again, but hashtags that we talk about when we talk about line graphs, which is the most used graph in ABA, right? Graphs are so important, right? A bunch, we have all this data, until we graph it, it's just sitting there, right? We can't really visually inspect it to see the change in behaviors that we want to see. Um, it, the graphs are just, it's so important when we become BCBAs, even as RBTs, their duties is also to graph. So all along the spectrum, um, but also they're known as equal interval, which we'll get into, hashtag frequency polygon and add subtract. Okay, those are just other things that you might see be used for um, line graphs. All right, so we're gonna do, have to do that for YouTube, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we're gonna start drawing together and I'm going to, we're gonna go over the seven parts that you need in a graph. And then we're gonna look at some graphs, but let's draw. So first thing, let me get into a black pen. All right, so. These are seven parts of a graph. And we're gonna draw them, highlight them, and make our own little key. I've not practiced this, but I think we can do this together as a nice little team. So we're gonna stay with black. So the first thing, guys, that we need is a horizontal axis, okay? Horizontal is this. Horizontal is also known as our x-axis. So let's draw a nice, long, horizontal axis. Okay, and I'm gonna color code that. Let's pick just the first one that came up, that's blue. Okay, so now blue down here. And I'm gonna talk about what else it is also known as. So it's the horizontal axis. Also known as the x-axis, right? And Liana always says she remembers this by um, abscissa. It's also called the abscissa, which is like scissors, right? And it looks like an x, right? So another hashtag to remember the name, it's also called. I really don't want to have to talk, but I think I'm going to have to. You guys, scissors, when you have scissors like this and you open them up, whoop, they make an x. Okay, I had to talk. Done. Abscissa, scissors. Abscissa. The horizontal axis is also known as the abscissa, right? Horizontal x, scissa, it's an x. Boom. I do need to do one thing because I need to create, I can go and I can talk about it in another section, but hold on. I just want to do this real quick. I, pause the phone. Don't do anything to your paper, but you want a little bit of room down here because I need to make a figure caption. All right, perfect. In case you guys need to remember abscissa, here you go. Oh, look at you pulling up. I don't even own scissors. That's great. So we need the x-axis in, the, what goes along our x-axis, right, 
is our time. It's a measure of time, whether it's sessions, dates, trials, whatever it is, it's some type of time. So let's do, for this, let's do um, days, right? And because it's equal interval, let's say we're gonna go by um, five. So we have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we have five, 10, 15, 20. Okay, 20 days, that's our time. The x-axis is also where we look for our intervention, our independent variable, okay? And I'll explain that as we draw this out. All right, let's get the next part we need is a vertical axis. And the vertical axis is where our behavior is gonna follow. So let's do, give me a color, Leah. Green. Green, all right. So that's our vertical axis, that's the second part here. The vertical axis, and the vertical axis is also known as the Y axis, and also known as the hashtag ordinate. Go ahead, Liat. Do you ever order something on Amazon and your husband or boyfriend or girlfriend says, come on, why did you order it? Why did you order it? Did you need that, right? Y axis is your ordinate. Why did you order it? So let's come up with a behavior here. Um, let's just say number of hits. Okay, so that you're always gonna see that when you look at a graph along that vertical axis, the Y axis is gonna be your dependent variable, your behavior, okay? That's your second thing. Now we're gonna need to draw in some data points, right? So let's say, let's go, I'm gonna get a black here. Okay, so here we go on day one. Well, first let's draw in a little, another equal interval so you guys can see this. So let's go up in, I'm not gonna do it exactly perfectly to the key, but let's go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, right? So here we go. I'm gonna go around here, here. I'm just drawing this to look really pretty. All right, so we have data points, right? This is another big part. So let's highlight hey. data points. What's wrong? Oh, I was telling you to do it pink. I thought you were gonna ask me a color. Oh, pink, okay, yeah, I like pink. All right, pink, baby pink. These are our data points. That's way too fat. Right, so these are just our data points. They're representing, you know, how many times they engage in that behavior when, like, right, at what date. So there's always gonna be like, okay, well, let's look at data point one here, right? That would represent two points. It'd represent along the x-axis, which is our time. Let's see, that's day one and 10, right? So it's gonna have an x and y coordinates. All of your data points would have a coordinate of an x and a y. It's representing a place in time and a number of behavior. So then what we're also gonna need, guys, is a condition change line. Let's say that this was baseline that we were just doing, okay? So now I'm gonna draw a nice condition phase change line here. Let's pretend this is an ABAB -A -B graph, okay? So here we're gonna have, those are our condition change lines. Let's make those 
orange. Not big enough. There. So condition change lines. These are important and they're under, they're important because they're representing some kind of change, right? Whether you're going from baseline to a treatment or you can have um, maybe something happened where they, and a new medication was implemented or there's something that happened in your treatment that you need to make um, apparent on the graph. So this is gonna be our condition change lines. So whether you're changing from one treatment to another, whether a minor thing happens. So Liad always says, um, you can have solid lines, which represents like a major change. Like I'm going from baseline to treatment, or you can have dotted lines. Like here we could have, maybe I throw in this little minor phase change line because something minor happened in the treatment. Like they were given a, the wrong meds that day or something like that, right? Like it's not a permanent change, Something minor happened, but you want to note it in your graph that it happened. Go ahead, Leah. <laughs> All right. Um, so <laughs> we, know how, we work together. You know, as you learn more and more, I know. As you learn more and more, you'll see that the we have the condition change lines, and when you see the dotted, if you if you actually they're they're both going to be shown in there, but you might be learning it as the dotted one is a condition change line, right? They say you have a condition like chicken pox. Let's say you had a, a minor change and the client had chicken pox. That's why it's all dotted like that. And let's say it's solid when it is um, a more major change, right? And that's meant to be an actual, if you're going according to Cooper, you probably learned that as a phase change, the solid line. Um, and but it's you might see it like used interchangeably like okay what condition were we in were we in baseline or what you'll actually be seeing solid lines for so it could be confusing i just wanted to put that out there you're doing great case i love that you're so great all right so now we need to look let's add some more data points i'm just gonna throw them out there all right so we're looking just drawing in to make this like the perfect line graph. Forget about this, just think that thing's not there. And boom. All right, so we're gonna have to add in some kind of condition um, labels. I don't know what the hell's happening right now, right? I don't know what phase is what, nothing's labeled. So we need condition labels. So here I'm gonna do baseline. Let me go smaller than that. So you're always gonna see this. This is why along the X, this is also our um, independent variable, right? So now we have treatment, let's do, I like functional communication training. That's one of my faves. Baseline, F, C, T, okay? So these highlighted in, let's do, let's do a blue, like a dark, dark blue. Okay, those are gonna be our condition labels. Sorry, I just wanna add one thing in because there was a question. Guys, it's not that you could draw through a um, condition dotted chain line. She said she did say to ignore that. So it's not that she was drawing through it. Oh yeah, no, no, no. I, I drew it so you guys would see that you could throw in a line one. I could erase it right now, actually. Oh shit. Small eraser. You never want to draw through a condition change line ever, right? The data points are always going to fall on the other side of them. That's a great point. And also, so I want to make sure that's SCD. So that, okay, perfect. Um, that's a great point. So you need a condition label. So the blue ones are our condition labels. Now we know what's happening in each condition. Um, so that's the other thing. And then we also want to look at the data path, right? So I highlighted, let's do 
let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna just pick another color, yellow, because these are kind of like, okay, we're looking at the data path now. Even though the pink one is highlighted as your data points, we also need to look at the data path, right? So like here, we look in that data path, let me get it. It's looking like a pretty good upwards trend with a little bit of variability, right? Because it kind of drops down there. Uh, this trend sucks, right? I have no fucking idea what trend that one's doing. This one's a nice, good upwards trend, right? So we're always looking at trends. So we look at our data path. So this yellow is going to be our data path. It's very important. Level trend and variability when you're inspecting graphs is why we look at the graphs, right? We want to see, did the level change or the behavior change? Okay, which trend? Is it trending up? Is it trending down? Um, and variability, right? Is it stable for us to like really implement treatment or is it all over the place and very variable, which maybe we don't want to implement treatment right away. All right, and then the last one that I'm going to throw in here, super, super small, and you might not always see this, but it's nice to have it, is going to be, let's say this is going to be figure one. This is our figure one. And it's the number of hits per day um, of, let's just say, Johnny at school. You can, whatever figure caption, that's gonna kind of capture what your graph is talking about. It's just another way to label your graph. And you look at that a lot in your Cooper book, like when you like, so you don't actually have to like go through the entire graph. You'll often just like see what the figure says, right? It'll be like 2.6. Yep. Um, this is showing a withdrawal design or whatever it is. And we'll look at these wherever you want to put it. We'll look at these when we look at the graphs. So these are the seven parts of the graph. I also want to throw in a really quick caveat to a scale break because you might see this. Um, if treatment wasn't provided for a certain amount of time, um, you would see um, something on the x-axis that might look like this, right? It might be two lines with like a dash in the middle of them, right? So that would be, let's label that as a different color, um, but this would be a scale break. So you know that no treatment was provided um, at this point in time. And you would not have data points during that time, clearly, because you're saying, Guess what? There was a break in services. Maybe they're on vacation. So I'm going to have a scale break so that I don't need to make my x axis from the friggin', you know, zero to 200. You could just break the scale and then start, right? And same with the y axis. You can have y axis, y axis scale breaks as well. Um, so just another little extra thing for you guys. All right. So now we've got seven parts of the graph. Visually, let's look at some graphs and talk about these things. All right, so right away, and you guys can call us out, what type of graph is this? Do you mean like line graph? Or do you mean like- Like what type line? of, um, yeah, line graph, sure. And what type of experimental design is it? A, B, A, B. Reversal. Multiple treatment. A, B, A, B. I heard someone say it. Multiple treatment. Multiple reversal. treatment. B, A, B. A, B. B, B, A, C, C. yes, B. A, B, A, C. So you got to read the figure captions, right? You got to read these things for you to be able to really say what type of graph this is. So yes, it, it is a reversal, absolutely. But re best answer is an A, B, A, C, because up here we see that we're in baseline, right? And then we're in RIRD, which is just response, interruption, redirection procedure. Don't worry about it. But it's just a treatment, right? That's one treatment. So that's B. Then we went back to baseline, but now we've implemented FCT, right? That's a different treatment. So we're, when, we're in, when we're inspecting graphs, we need to really, really look at everything before you even look back at the question. If you get a graph question, you're like, all right, I need to know the experimental design. I need to know what the behavior is. So what the behavior, what is the dependent variable in this graph? The rate of biting. Yep, biting, right? That's our dependent variable. What is, 
Well, we have two of them, but what are the independent variables? RIRD and FCT. Exactly, see? And they follow along the x-axis, right? Even though they're up here, they still, and x-axis is yes sessions or time, but it's also the intervention. So now we know that we know our dependent variable, check. We know the independent variable, check. We know the experimental design. These are things that I would be doing if I got a test question with a graph on it, okay? Check. And now we're gonna be looking at what can we tell from this graph, right? So basically we know that they went from baseline to a treatment. They never went back to baseline in that treatment again though, right? So it's basically, if you really think about it, there's not much experimental control demonstrated here, guys, really, because we just have two A, B, if you broke it apart, and another basically an A, B. They never go back to baseline to that treatment again. So it's just to kind of, and Maggie made this graph, and I loved it because it brought up so many questions for me where I was like, ah, light bulb, light bulb, right? Like they only removed, they just reversed, they never, or they just, um, yeah, they just re withdrawed. I can't say that word, you know that. <laughs> Withdraw. <laughs> they never reverse back to that treatment, right? So it's one of those things. So we're looking at this, and you know, you can definitely, I, I want to ask you guys from here, right? From the end of baseline to the beginning of the RIRD treatment, is there a change in level? Yes. Yes. Yep, there sure is. And if we're looking at baseline, right? Is this um, high variability, low variability, or stable? What would you say? High, high, high. variability. High. Yep. High. And in high variability, it's really hard to find a trend, right? So you're kind of inspecting the graph and you're like, I can say all of this stuff before I even have to go back to the question because I'm so confident in my graph reading skills. Then when you read the question, you're like, ah, oh, yeah, got it, right? Well, technically with this graph, since the baseline's not stable, they shouldn't have started the intervention, right? Exactly. Except what if the, the rate of biting is so high that, and maybe the biting is so severe, which you can't, you can't infer, but they have to implement something, right? Like the response, they have to do something because if you look at it, it's actually at an increasing trend in the last data point. So you're like, oh, okay. So sometimes you have to just get in there no matter what the graph says and just be like, screw it, let's do it. And they did see a nice decrease, right? Okay, I mean, it went down to, I don't know, an average of like four, right? Rate of biting. We don't know if it's rate of biting per minute per hour. The graph does not specify. Um, so really just being able to look at what's happening to the trend, the level, um, if it's stable or variable. And right now you really couldn't pick an intervention. I'm just highlighting because I like to highlight. You couldn't say if RIRD or functional communication training really had more effect than the other. You really couldn't because they didn't go back to a baseline on either one of them. Okay, so when you just have a, that AB, you don't have much to tell about what the treatment, because anything else could have been at play that could have been changing that behavior, right? Maybe that day they had, um, you know, a ton of Adderall and they like didn't need to engage in biting, whatever it, it may be. So until you go back to that baseline, you don't have a lot to say. But if you can start by pulling out all of these things when you look at graphs and you're like, ah, oh, all right, I've checked off all these things that I can tell about the graph. Now let's read the question again. Because I've done so many times where I've read the question and then I've been like, I didn't even inspect the graph, right? Because I got so nervous with, nervous with the question that I just like froze and I was like, ugh, you just slow down. So now you have this crazy graph, right? And you're like, oh my God, I don't know what is going on. There are two um, independent variables happening, right? There's like a lot going on. There's two different dependent variables they're measuring on each side right? Like, are you kind of like, I, when I got this from Maggie, I'm like, ah, <laughs> like, how do you measure two different sides, right? And again, this said aggression, but it didn't match elopement. So she said, change that to, if you change that to, and these are all real life graphs from Maggie, um, his rate of elopement was, it was aggression. Like he was aggressing to get away from something. Um, so if you change that to aggression, uh, to elopement, it would make it more cohesive. But really the the black dots are going to be the elopement, right? 
And then the open squares here, the worst color I could have picked, is the rate of manding. So now we are teaching FCT to man for that break. So, so they're all graphed on the same thing, right? And it's still going to be, instead of starting a baseline, they're starting in NCR. It's still an A, B, A, B. Design. Check. You know your dependent variables, right? Because there's two here. There's definitely- Lacey, would that technically be an NCR reversal? Oh, like a DR, um, the NCR reversal? Yeah. Yeah. Type of yeah. reversal. Mm -hmm. Good job, Annalisa. Yep. So now you're like, all right, so what can I tell about this graph? Like, all right, so an NCR in that condition, the rate of elopement was really high and the rate of um, manding for escape was really low, right? And then you go into the first phase of FCT and you're like, all right, I see that the aggression is actually, it's high and then it's, it's got a decreasing trend, right? With functional communication treatment, in play, that rate of elopement is decreasing at a high rate. And what's happening to the FCT with, I mean, to the um, rate of manning for escape, right? Engaging in that appropriate response, it's increasing. So you can say that, you go back to NCR, it looks exactly like the baseline before, right? The rate of elopement yeah. goes up and the rate of manning for escape goes down. Now you go back to functional communication training, same thing, we see a decreasing trend and we see an increasing trend in manding for escape. So just by looking at it that way, you're able to not make it scary, talk it out and be like, oh, okay. So now you look back at a question and you're like, well, what can I, I can tell you anything you want about this graph. Cause I just walked through it on my own <laughs> and not making things seem so scary cause they can be right. And you see graphs, you're like, ah, but when you sit down and break it down, and kind of maybe, you know, highlight or whatever you need to do. You can really talk through a graph as long as you know what behaviors are at play, what the intervention is, and what's happening visually to the trend, um, the level, and the variability. And that's going to be clear indicators on whether the treatment is effective or not effective. Let's get one more. All right, so this one, what is our S, I mean, what is our, um, our dependent variable? SIB. SIB. Yep. What is our independent variable? 100 days. It's DRA and DRA. timeout. Timeout. Yes. Calendar days, the x-axis is your time, but the independent variable, the interventions, are also along that, but these are your independent um, variables, your intervention. So there's two interventions here. So if you had to pick what type of experimental design this is, what would you pick? Alternating. Alternating treatment. Alternating treatment. With baseline, right? Because you don't always need a baseline and alternating treatment, but there are options that you could do a baseline. So if I had to say, you know, in this graph, which intervention um, was more effective in reducing SIB, what could you say? I know. Yes, you could. There's a pretty clear differentiation between the two of these, right? If they were overlapping each other, what could you say? If there wasn't a clear functional control there between like, if they were at the same level, then one's not necessarily more effective than the other. Yeah, like you just couldn't really give any results. Undifferentiated, yeah. Which treatment um, is actually more effective. Um, so this is a good way to look at a different type of an alternating treatment that isn't a functional analysis, right? This is just comparing two treatments. Differential reinforcement of alternative behavior or a timeout. So timeout is a punishment procedure, right? <laughs> and DRA is going to be um, reinforcing an appropriate alternative behavior. Um, it looks like here that the punishment was actually more uh, successful at decreasing that behavior. But I'm sure they're using them with reinforcement and appropriate termination and appropriate supervision. <laughs> All right, 
what's the next one? Oh, what's this one? What type of experimental design is this? Changing criterion. Changing criterion. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Changing criterion. And what is the dependent variable? Intra novel intervals. Intervals. Yep, new intervals. That was Alexa. We're wrapping up. Alexa is the last one. And uh, Alexa off. I've never really used her before, so this is fun. You did um, such a great job, my sweet friend. On I, your here. I just want to show one thing about this changing criterion, okay, guys? Do you see how here it does a little mini reversal, right? Back to a previous condition uh, criterion level. That's really just to demonstrate stronger experimental control, okay? So if you're looking at this and you're like, all right, I know the dependent variable. The independent variable is what? What are lag SR pluses? Yeah, a so lag schedules of reinforcement. So lag schedules of reinforcement, say you don't even know what that is, which what it is is when you're teaching interverbals and they're saying the same thing over and over, you would do a lag schedule so they have to say different forms of the word, right? Different response variations until they get reinforcement. So here they have to have 10 seconds before whatever the next word they say is. But even if you didn't know what it was, you could still read the graph and say, I know what the independent variable is. I know what the dependent variable is. I can see that it has one, two, three, four, five, six different um, criterion changes, which is a good amount of number. Um, you can see that experimental control was demonstrated because the data points fall along each of the criterion pretty beautifully. This doesn't really happen in real life, but in this life that Maggie made, it does. Um, and you can see, oh, well, if they ask you what happened, you know, here, that's a mini return to baseline, right? In a changing criterion, you're just going to go back to a previous set to see, hey, I can turn this behavior on and off. That's graphs in 30 minutes with a bunch of different types and all your parts of the graph that you need to know when you read a graph question, I want you to be able to say, I remember Casey coloring this. You don't even know the colors, but you can pull all of these out. Okay. I'm going to stop the recording. If I know how. How do I do it? I act like I never have done this before. <laughs> I can't find the recording. Green. Or the screen share. Oh, here we go. Stop share. There we go. Woohoo!